Amen. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, all of you that work with children and our children's church ministry. We appreciate you so very, very much. The only time children will be quiet is when you want them to be loud. <laughs> Thank you so much, kids. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Be with them, sweet Jesus, is all I can say. <laughs> We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Let's stand once again. We're going to invite the presence of the Lord into our worship service, believing that He is, and He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. Every need that we have is already met through Christ Jesus. Amen. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He is Jehovah Rapha, our healer. He is Jehovah Sitkanu, our peace. He is everything that we need. So we don't have to beg Him to do for us what He already is. We just have to have a revelation of Him as our salvation, as our healing, as our deliverer, as our peace, as our comfort. All of those things that He is. We need a revelation of that personally and then our situations and our circumstances change in that relationship with Him. Amen. So let us pray that we would be open today to receive all that He is. Father, we come to you today, we give praise and glory unto you for who you are, for your greatness, for your goodness. And we've come, Lord, today to celebrate who you are. We've come, Lord, to, uh, to lay before you and all that we have and all that we are and surrender it to you, O Lord, in adoration for your goodness, for your love, for your mercy, O Lord, which is enduring forever. Lord, I thank you for this body of believers and I speak blessing upon them, whatever weight, whatever heaviness, whatever burden, whatever situation that may be weighing heavy on them. I pray, Lord, that while they're in this worship service, Lord, as we're experiencing the fullness of who you are, Lord, may that weight, may that burden, may the need be met today. I'm believing you, Father, for salvation of souls, for rededication of those that are walking wayward and have gone cold and indifferent in their relationship with you. May today the, the fire of God be rekindled kindled in their life. I pray, Lord, that our praise, our worship, every word sung, every word preached, every word spoken, Lord, may it bring glory and honor unto your name, for you are worthy, O Lord. You alone are worthy, and you're the reason that we come today to celebrate. So receive our praise unto you. And when we've said all that we've come to say and do, we pray that our presence in your house would make bring joy and honor unto your name. For it is in your name we speak these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One more time. Let's give him an ovation of praise. Amen. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord in giving right now if our ushers would come. Amen. And I know that we don't give to a need, but I've already said that this week over 500 individuals were touched through the ministry of this church. And I'm so grateful for that. Not because it's about numbers, it's about souls. All 500 of those people have an eternal soul that we need to be interested in. Every one of those people, 500 plus people, Christ already died for. So let us do our very best, not only to represent the gospel, to, to, but to bring them into the kingdom of God that we might disciple them so that they too could be servants of those that still do not know Christ. Amen. If our ushers would come, we're going to worship the Lord in giving. And let me say this, of, uh, of the 200 plus uh, teenagers that, or 300 I guess, uh, it was 317 teenagers. 57 of them, I think, said they would come here if they had a ride. We have one little van that we're filling it up. We have over 60 teens that are attending every Wednesday night service. If we had two or three more of those vans... Could you imagine how many people that we could, uh, we could disciple into full 
uh, blown, uh, devil killing, sin hating uh, Christians around here. So will you just pray that God will open up the door that we could uh, we could purchase those vans or buses or whatever we need because the window of opportunity is short and we don't want to have to stand before the Lord and say, well, I'm sorry, I just didn't do it. Amen. So uh, will you help us pray about that? And uh, our, uh, our custom around here is that we speak blessing over our times of giving. Amen. And I believe it's working. I know it is because six years ago we were under a million dollars, uh, over a million dollars in debt. Today we are so close to paying that off, it's not even funny. And I thank God because He supplies every need. Are you ready? Let's worship the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come into your presence, thanking you for the new beginning church. You have called us to take the gospel to Nicholas County, to West Virginia, and to the nations of the world. We are a growing body of believers, and there is no division among us. Because you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, we have everything we need to fulfill the Great Commission. We are your people, filled with your spirit, and walking in your love. We are doers of the word, and not hearers only. We lift our hands and worship you with these gifts. And as we give in the offering today, we are thanking you for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, rents and royalties, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, Debt's demolished. It's offering time. And we are thankful that we have this opportunity to give. Hallelujah! 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 Love incarnate, love divine Star angels gave the sign Bow to Babel on bended knee The Savior of humanity
Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you Oh,
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give Him praise in this house this morning. He is so good and worthy of our praise. Amen. Why don't you turn around and greet someone, let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. And you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Wow, what a beautiful congregation you are this morning. Amen, amen. And Merry Christmas. If I don't see you next Sunday morning on Christmas Day, our Sunday will be, our service will be at 2 p.m. on Christmas Day, communion and candlelight, and we hope that you will be there. But if I don't see you because of, I know what a busy time that is with family and the, all of the festivities, um, you have a very Merry Christmas. Amen. I want to present to you this morning a message, the Christmas rock. You know, for decades, uh, song lyrics and one-liners have uh, made reference to associate Christmas with a rock. Now, that proverbial lump of coal for Christmas folklore that uh, dates all the way back to the 1600s and uh, Holland uh, to rock candy that we all enjoy this time of year in every imaginable flavor. And I know it's a stretch, but that classic song, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, that, that might be stretching it a little bit. Uh, but uh, not to mention the fact that most jewelry companies, especially at this time of year, would try to convince you that that special person in your life deserves a rock for Christmas, and after all, diamonds are a girl's best friend, they say, but uh, not this year, baby, that's all I can say. <laughs> when I thought of some of the references, I was really drawn to the fact that uh, rocks do play an important role in the advent of Christ. From the prophecies foretold of Jesus' birth through His life, death, and even in our eternal role in the kingdom of God, we find citations in Scripture that connects Christ with a stone. And last Sunday morning, Jackie made mention uh, of the manger being made of stone. And last Sunday evening, Bobby uh, made reference of Christ being the stone that was not hewn by hands, that came out of the mountain crushing uh, the statue in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And hopefully today I can uh, bring these thoughts together, causing us to realize that Christ really is the rock of Christmas. But before we do that, let's go ahead and read the Christmas story from Luke's account, chapter 2, beginning with verse number 1. The scripture says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord was shown round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people." For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go even now into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. 
And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and that babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying God and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen at, as it was told unto him, unto them. Now this is the historical text of the incarnation of Christ. Though he eternally existed with God, even before the world was created, he was and is the Word of God in action. As seen in creation, when God spoke, Christ Jesus, the Word, brought everything into existence that the Father had spoken. And now in Bethlehem, that Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. His birth brought validity to all of the prophecies and ancient scriptures that would have otherwise uh, been uh, rendered false, nothing but a lie and void of any truth. But praise be to God, when that Word became flesh, all of those prophecies foretold hundreds of years before his birth were validated at that time and I'm here to tell you that Christ is here still today to validate God's word that he loves you eternally and he gave himself a ransom for our sins today amen now that living word on that Christmas day, Emmanuel, God with us, is born in a stable, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and laid in that manger. Let me point out to you the fact that stables in ancient Palestine were, for the most part, caves. At the least, they were an outcrop of rocks that would... Uh, or a ledge that would provide some shelter for animals in that day. The stable that surrounded the Christ child was made of stone. A mere cave. A mere cave. But those caves, those stones, each one were created in the beginning to be the shelter from the cold. For the Christ child that was to come. Could you imagine if those walls of stone could speak that day? Could you imagine what they would have said if they could have announced how blessed we are to have been created by Him and now because we exist, we can offer some shelter. We can offer something back to Him. We, in the minds and the eyes of everyone else, is nothing more but a cave, a rock formation at best. But now we shelter within our grasp the child that created us and now will redeem us. Amen? Because you see, the curse of sin did not just touch humanity, but it, it cursed the entire earth. And those stones, if they could have talked, they could have said, Now the Redeemer who has come to redeem this earth also from the curse is here within our embrace. Can you imagine what it would have been like if those stones could have talked? Perhaps they would have recited the scripture from 2 Samuel chapter 22 where, the, where Samuel said, the Lord is my rock. Or David said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. He is my deliverer, the God of my rock. In him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower, my refuge, my savior. You saved me from violence. You see, many would have come. They would have brought their animals into those caves, into those rock formations to be secure and to be safe. And if those rocks could have talked, they might have proclaimed the words of David that we have provided some shelter, but the one who can provide eternal shelter is now within the bowels of who we are. Praise the name of the Lord. All throughout Scripture, we see that Christ's identity is revealed in a rock. Let us remember that the purpose of his, begin, his coming was to fulfill the will of God and to reconcile all fallen man 
back to God. He has become the only means of our salvation today, friends. Remember the first incidents where God addresses a multitude, a nation of people. He did so through Moses when he called him up on the mountain. He gave to Moses his word written in a stone. Written in tablets of stone. That he might bring that word back to the people. That they might have an, a foundation to be established upon. Amen. And so these same people that received this written word from God on tablets of stone. Had been liberated from Egypt's bondage. Had wandered into the wilderness and there became thirsty and dry. Without water, they were languishing, and they murmured, and they complained. And God instructs Moses once again to take his rod and to smite what? A rock. That rock represented Christ Jesus, and from that rock came living water. Numbers 20, verse 11 says, Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the, smote the rock twice, and water came out abundantly amen can somebody say abundantly that water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beasts also i'm here to remind us that he steal the rock from which the fountain of living waters flow oh hallelujah and he still flows abundantly amen and everyone can drink and everyone can be refreshed and everyone can drink from the rock which is christ jesus jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13 says that my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the the fountain of living waters and they've hewn out for themselves cisterns broken cisterns that are able to hold no water this world is looking at all kinds of other resources and all kinds of measures and all kinds of things to keep us safe and to prolong our life and, and to give us a better life to live here on this earth but let me tell you it will all come to naught it is all worthless it is all, will all fall short if we do not receive Receive that living water that comes through Christ Jesus today. Can somebody say amen? amen? The rock of Christ Jesus, born in a cave, laid in a manger of stone. As Jackie pointed out last week, the mangers of in the Judean caves were hewn out of rock. Some hewn out of the walls of the cave, a ledge in the side of the mountain. And could you imagine when those rocks felt and sensed the deity of God as Mary placed that child in that manger. Tell, don't tell me rocks don't respond to Christ Jesus. Because they do. Re remember at his death, when he died on the cross, on Golgotha, on the Mount of Sacrifice, they, those rock formations and that dry ground of Palestine had received countless thousands of gallons of blood sacrifices. But when Jesus hung on the cross and his blood touched those rocks, they began to quake and shake because they proclaimed we have received the blood of countless lambs and rams and heifers that have been sacrificed but now the blood of the Redeemer the Son of God the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world what shall we do but quake and shake rocks respond to Christ Jesus and if that rock, hewn rock manger could speak. When Mary laid that Christ child within its bosom. They might have said, we have existed 
And we came into being as a result of the work of man's hand, hewn out and fashioned for the purpose of feeding Israel's lambs. But now we're able to host the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. If that manger could have talked, that manger of stone, if it could have talked, perhaps it would have recited Psalm 118 that says, The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doings, and it's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that we were created for, and the Lord has had His way. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The simple stone manger created to hold food for the inhabitants of the stable. Now, it holds the bread of heaven. Laying within its breasts is the rock, Christ Jesus. That whole analogy brings, brings a new meaning to Jesus' conversation with Peter. In John chapter 1 verse 42 when he said, Your, your name is Simon, you're, you're, you're the son of Jonas. But you shall be called Cephas. Which by interpretation means stone. And later he would say to Cephas, You are Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah. You and I were not there when the stable of stone and the manger of stone held the rock. Christ Jesus. But now, according to scriptures, we have been made lively stones by His coming. And through the power of His Spirit. We are also lively stones. A spiritual house. A holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Acceptable to God. By Christ Jesus. You see that stony stable. That stony manger. Have taken on a whole new persona. Since that first Christmas morn. When the rock Christ Jesus came. The world over since that time till today. Have, wrote, have romanticized the image of that first Christmas morn. Because our cards and our stationery and our letters. And, uh, and all of our screensavers and all of those things. Seldom depict the gruesomeness of the cave. And the gruesomeness of and the simplicity of that hewn out rock stable. But our Christmas cards it romanticize the stable as this, uh, this perfectly built and symmetrically even uh, man built uh, uh, stable of stone. And, and this beautifully and perfectly uh, measured manger with the hay just, uh, just so uh, intimately put there. Because they realize that the world changed. When the rock of Christmas came, laid in a manger of stone, held within the confines of a stone cave. And so it is with us. Were we not before Christ? Nothing but a stone. Hard hearted. And known for such things. But Ezekiel 36, 26 gives us a prophecy. Where the word of God says, a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit I will put within you. And I'll take away that stony heart. Out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. You see I was just as hard. And just as cold. And just as indifferent. As that stony stable. And that stony uh, manger. But when Christ came. 
I was changed. Because I received the rock of Jesus. The rock of Christmas, which is Jesus Christ. And upon Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. And my friends, you are here today. And I pray that the rock of Christmas changes you. That it makes you a lively stone. It creates you to be part of that spiritual house in which the Spirit of God is able to dwell. That it takes away the stoniness and the coldness of your heart and gives you a heart of compassion, a heart after God. And the transformation that He brings is not temporary. Do you know, one of the most depressing things about our celebration of Christmas is that how quickly it comes and goes. All of the anticipation that builds up to that, to that moment of opening gifts and sharing our love and lavishing our love on one another. And soon, it, it, it's over. Nothing but tinsel and wrapping paper and a tree that's got to be shoved in a box and found to find a place for it to go for another year. It's over so quickly, but... The transition of our Christmas celebration quickly changes, but I'm telling you, if you receive the rock of Christmas, you will be changed forever. And according to what the Spirit of God said to the church at Pergamos, recorded in John's revelation in Revelation chapter 2, he says, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And to him that overcomes will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone. Oh, hallelujah. And in that stone a new name is written, which no man knows saves the one that receives it. Oh, hallelujah. When the rock of Christmas changes our hearts and our lives, we are changed for eternity, and we have the promise of eternity in Christ Jesus as a new creature having a new name amen and Jesus identity with the earth made of stone is so intricately woven together that when he himself was rebuked by those religious people who said and believed that it was blasphemy for people to hail him as the king as he rode into Jerusalem. What did Jesus say? He said, if these would hold their peace, the rocks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even the rocks would cry out because they know their creator. Amen. I don't want a rock crying out for me. Amen. I was once nothing but a stony, hard-hearted individual. But now, the rock of Christ Jesus has touched my life. And I am a new creature because of the rock. And even in Jesus' death, when he laid down his life, and they placed him where? In a cave. Placed him within the confines of yet another cave. A borrowed tomb. And sealed that tomb with yet another stone. And just like at the beginning. The stone was in a stone. In a stone. The rock was in a stone, sealed by a stone, but now the rock of Christ Jesus springs forth into everlasting life and the door is rolled away. 
and the stone ledge that upon which he lay is now empty today because the rock Christ Jesus is alive forevermore and we can rejoice and we can celebrate because we don't look back to historical Jesus that once lived and died but we celebrate today the Christ Jesus the rock that is alive forevermore and the stone is rolled away and my prayer is that he will roll the stone away from your heart today whatever you have concealed within yourself you've hid it from others you deny it to your, with yourself and you do not want to be exposed for the true being and person that you are, I pray that the rock Christ Jesus crushes and moves that stone and liberates you here today. I want you to receive the stone. Not a diamond, but the stone. The rock of Christmas, Christ Jesus, the Lord, today. Greg, would you come? Father, I've done my best to convey to these people the word that you've given me. I pray, Lord, that now that you will deal with hearts and lives and those that don't know you, those that have wandered away, those that have gone astray, those that have allowed the difficult things of life to overcome them and burden them and Cause such depression that they have wandered and stumbled from your presence. I pray, Lord, that today the rock and the stone will be rolled away. That Jesus, who is the solid rock, the cornerstone of our foundation of faith, may he take precedence in their lives today. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me all over the house as they begin to play? Let me ask you, let me ask you this. If you are here this morning and you need Christ Jesus, more than anything that someone could gift you and wrap it in a beautiful box and tie it with a, with a magnificent bow, it will, be, it will be nothing in comparison to the gift of Christ Jesus as your Lord. I'm not asking you to join the church. I'm not asking you to become part of this specific local church. I'm inviting you to Jesus. Because I don't know a perfect church that's ever existed. I don't know a perfect people. That's why we've adopted this slogan. Nobody's perfect. Everybody's welcome. And anything is possible. Don't come to a church. Don't come to a denomination. Don't come to a minister. But come to the rock. Because I tell you, if you've not lived long enough and you don't know it yet, your world will one day be shaken by death, by divorce, by sickness, by all kinds of things that will rock the very foundation upon which you stand. But I can tell you that if you receive Christ Jesus, that even when everything else is shaken, you will be able to stay in secure knowing that Christ Jesus the Lord is your salvation. The church can't save you. I can't save you. But Jesus the rock can. So I invite you to the rock this morning. This altar is open and if you're here today and you need Jesus Christ, I don't care if you're young or old, I don't care if you're male or female, I don't care what your condition is. I don't care what you've done. And some of you may be saying that my sin is so great, Christ could never forgive. He already did. It's not that He can't. He already did it. When He died on that cross, your sins were forgiven. You've just got to receive Him right now. And that's what I'm asking. Anywhere in the house, do you need the Lord? As they begin to sing, I want you to come. If you need Christ, if you are are cold, if you have backslidden, if you've turned your back on God and you're no longer serving Him, I want to invite you to receive Him today. Right now in this place, would you come?
Yes. Hallelujah. body if you'll come we'll anoint you with oil according to the word of God and believe for your healing right now do you need a touch from the Lord would you come do you need healing in your body
hallelujah. To God be the glory. Great things He has done. Amen. You're not supposed to interrupt the service. I think they're going to like this interruption. Debbie, would you join us up here, please? Pastor and Debbie, on behalf of the New Beginnings Worship Center, it's my honor and my privilege to give you a token of our appreciation. And we want to tell you guys Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and we hope you live to be 150. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you, church. We're so appreciative of your love and your kindness to us. Not just at Christmas, but every day. Last two weeks, you have worked every day doing something for this community, something that expresses the love of God to others. And I appreciate your selflessness and your hard work, your commitment to God in all that you do. Amen. Say thank you. I say thank you so very much. And for all of you young men and strong men who I talked to before, as soon as we're finished here, we need to move this baby grand piano down here. Uh, so be careful with it, please. <laughs> if you could just do that as soon as we're dismissed, I would certainly appreciate it. God bless you. We love you. Have a great day. Merry Christmas. See you tonight at 6 o'clock.